Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna to be working on making the carbon fiber roof skin. By the end of this video, we are gonna have a carbon fiber roof. So in previous videos, I was making the roof mold. I'm gonna compile all those videos in how to make a roof mold. Probably have that part one, have making the roof skin part two. But it was a ton of work to make the mold. I also was having some issues with it flexing after I took it off the car and pulled the roof panel out of it, the original metal roof panel. I got some wood, decided that probably wasn't the best idea. I would have had to steam it. It was contoured. I wanted something so when it was upside down, it would be flat. So I ended up using carbon fiber and then I just cut it flat. Also another issue is, not an issue, but people have been wondering why I use carbon fiber to make a mold. It is because carbon fiber has a lot better tolerances. Plus when you're making a carbon fiber part, using carbon fiber is more desirable, but it is more expensive as well. And another thing, I used high temp gel coat, high temp lamin laminating resin, the carbon fiber is high temp, so I could autoclave. And if I have pre-impregnated carbon fiber, I can make dry carbon parts, but I am just using this to make a roof. The part is gonna be plain light enough. It doesn't need to be dry carbon. And then I'm gonna paint, I'm gonna clear over it anyway. So that being said, let's get to work on this. Let's get the roof. First thing, the roof's gonna come off, put it upside down on these stands over here. Then I could finish polishing the inside of the roof. Then I could get the flanges bolted on. I got some bolts as well and then I could work on getting everything ready to make the part. So I am gonna spray clear gel coat in there, and the reason to spray clear gel coat, it just makes a very nice finish, and it gives you a very nice result from the finished part. Even though I'm gonna clear over the gel coat, it is a, uh, I'm pretty sure it's an epoxy gel coat, or it, it accepts epoxy, so it should be fine with clear coat. It'd be fine without it, but I am planning on clearing that edge which uh, I might as well just clear the whole roof. So let's get to work, get this roof skin, or get this mold off of the car. I'm just really happy that I'm at this point because it is, and it was, a lot of work. So let's get to work on this and get this done because we, by the end of this video, we're gonna have a carbon fiber roof panel, and that means we are one step closer to painting the car, which hopefully gets done next week. Just finished polishing the mold to a nice high gloss finish. And there is a reason behind doing this. So the reason is when you pop the part out of the mold and it doesn't have a high gloss finish or it does, whatever texture the mold is, is what the part is gonna look like. As you guys saw when I made this mold off of the roof, it was a thousand grit sanding scratches and it picked that up and it was the same texture. All I had to do was thousand grit it. I didn't even really need a thousand grit, but I thousand grit it, 2000 and then polished it and this is perfectly fine. Since I'm gonna clear the roof anyway, it is, it's polished, I could go even more crazy. Kinda of has a haze on it because there's water lines on there, but other than that, it's still kinda of wet. But other than that, she is ready to go. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put bolts in between each one of these keyways. So all the way down the flange and then I could bolt the flange to the mold, seal the flange in, and then we could get ready to spray some gel coat. So just finished drilling all the holes for the flanges. The one thing, I didn't get long enough bolts. So it's already too late to go back to the store to get bolts. So tomorrow I'll go grab some longer bolts and bolt this flange down, seal up the mold, and we'll be ready to make a part. So I'm very excited about this. But uh, yeah, all you have to do is bolt the flange and you have to make sure everything is pretty braced. That's why I put the cross section in the top of the roof as well. The reason I did that was because when you vacuum bag something, it tries to flatten it out, kind of, which uh, is an issue. So if it does flatten it out or distort it, that's kind of a bad thing. So the roof or the part won't be the correct shape. So I should have enough bracing under there, plus the flanges should keep it true this way and in the back and in the front. 
it's uh, not that wide of a span. Also in the corners, you wanna make sure that you have a nice thick buildup of fabric or resin because that just resists, gives it the urge to resist the, uh, the forces against it when you're vacuum bagging it. So the mold is now ready to make the carbon fiber part. So what I'm gonna do is spray gel coat onto the mold first, but as you can see, I use plastazine all the way down to seal that up. Also, the gel coat will overlap that and seal it as well, but I put mold release down on here, I sealed the mold, and then I got all those bolts nice and tight to make sure all of this doesn't pull in on itself and it doesn't go flat, as well as put some masking tape along the edge where I'm gonna put the vacuum bag tape. So. I don't want any of the, uh, the gel coat over this and uh, where the vacuum bag tape is, it won't stick. So this is a nice little thing just to put some tape down and then you can get the, then you don't have to scrub it off because if you do not have tape on there, then you have to kind of work at it to get it off and the tape will peel off really nice. Just finished laying the last layer of 3K carbon fiber. The first layer is clear gel coat. The second layer is carbon slash blue Kevlar. If you guys haven't seen it yet, you will see it at the end of the video, but I do have a video where I got the fabric. Then I have a layer of Soric. So the Soric is honeycomb. It's also pretty much a bleeder. So it, it takes up the whole center of the roof. It adds additional strength because it is honeycomb. And then I have this layer of 3K carbon fiber. And the reason there's only two layers, the Soric adds so much additional strength, it doesn't really need to be any thicker. I want a light part. Also, I am trying to match the thickness. I may make two of these. So this is gonna be the first test one to see how it comes out, how the mold was. Then I may make another one, but I'm trying to keep the same thickness as the sheet metal. So the sheet metal is pretty thin. I think I may actually be a layer thinner than the actual sheet metal roof, which will end up being an issue. So I'll make this one. If there is an issue with it being too thin, I will add, I'll make another one with three layers of carbon fiber fabric and we should resolve that. But right now we're ready to put all the vacuum bagging stuff in here. And another good tip, when you're laying all this down, the first layer I laid down, 
the gel coat was still a little tacky. If you let the gel coat dry, you could reactivate it with some acetone, just kind of spritz it on there. You don't want to put a bunch, just a little mist, and then you could just do the same thing. You can get the fabric all in the contours. It's really nice because when you vacuum bag it, the fabric isn't trying to conform to all these edges. You already have it pressed in. So I am going to pre-vacuum bag this, make sure I don't have any leaks, do a vacuum drop test, and just kind of go from there. So let's get on this, get all the vacuum bag tape on here and get everything ready to go and then get the vacuum bag on here and then suck a vacuum on it. And hopefully we don't have any issues after we do the drop test. Then I could run resin through it. Like I said, the center, pretty much the whole center of the roof has Soric in it. So I will put a bleeder. You can actually see where the Soric is, but I'll have a bleeder and then I'll have, I'll have P apply, a bleeder, and then some stuff to absorb the excess resin. And then we'll run some tubes. I'll probably run the tubes up along the edge up here, just so the resin can flow down. I don't need this whole edge anyway. And then just kind of run it along here as well. Same thing with the back. First attempt of the roof, I had an issue and it wasn't with the vacuum bagging process or the layup or anything like that. It was with hardener that I ordered was supposed to be almost two hours work of work time. So, and it started hardening. The pot was already hard in maybe 45 minutes. So I'm gonna have to kind of look into what exactly happened and just kind of go from there so it doesn't happen again because I want the next roof, unfortunately, you know, stuff happens, trial and error. And since this is the largest roof mold and part that I have ever made, it's just a little experience, but we'll just uh, continue this tomorrow and get this thing popped out of here, cleaned up and ready for the next roof. And then I can actually throw this one up on the car because it seems like it wet enough of the this stuff out. So it'll just have like this big, sagging spot in here because I don't think, I'm not sure. I don't think there's any resin here, but there could be some. I guess we'll find out when we pop it out, but uh, just kind of disappointing. I was able to pull the roof out of the mold. As you can see, the mold is still good and ready to go. So what I'm gonna do is clean up this clay. I've decided to go a different route. So when I did the first roof, I had a leak right here. You can see I sprayed some spray glue in there, trying to seal it up, but 
it obviously didn't seal it. So what I'm gonna do the next time around is, actually next time around is today, I'm waiting on some slower hardener as well. So I ordered that last night, probably be here in a week, but I'll clean all this up and get it ready. So I'm gonna run a bead of silicone around here, then just let it set up. Then I won't have any worries of there being any leaks around this area. And another thing is, I won't have to worry about um, the resin. It, it cured way too fast. It was supposed to have a work time of like an hour and 30 minutes. And I started seeing the, the pot of resin start to steam and get hot in like, it was like around 45 minutes. So it really, it really made the, the roof would have came out decent enough, but um, it would have just lost pressure at the end. But the other issue is um, it didn't wet the whole part out. So it looks good. I really like how I brought it outside. I really like how the carbon looks. So this is how it's gonna look. It's a little bit dirty still, probably hard to see. I wish it was a little bit lighter like this when it's not wet out, but it still gives you that nice effect when you, when you look at it and the sun catches it. I think the bottom's probably the best down there it's probably hard to see on camera but i really do like how it looks so in uh in a week or so we'll try this we'll attempt this one more time i think i won't have any more issues like i said before this was the largest mold that i've ever made and the largest vacuum bag part i've ever done plus the flanges are very long so it's just a really new experience and with educations comes cost so um also as you can see, another thing I want to test out, this was going to be a test roof anyway. I ran the gel coat underneath it because I was using that six mil tip, which I got a gun with a two, two tip and I'm going to actually, you can see it in there, the difference in the, the height. So that would have shown anyway, and I was planning on making it on the roof regardless, but um, I thought I was going to be able to wet the whole part out and not have any issues there. So. I guess we'll just kind of, it's weird that it wetted out here too. So I don't, I don't understand that. So um, yeah, until, until next week, we'll attempt this again and try to get this roof all buttoned up.